This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are looking to leverage the power of PR to grow your business and increase awareness of your brand, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us his formula to get your brand story published in a, uh, in public, in popular media outlets, even if you don't have any experience in PR or connections with writers and journalists. We're joined today by Mickey Kennedy, who founded e-releases 24 years ago to help small businesses, authors, and startups increase their visibility and credibility through press release marketing. Hey, Miki, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good to be here. Yes, yes. Great, great. So, uh, you know, in our pre-interview chat, you told me about your story and and uh, how you you help uh, e-commerce uh, brands or or uh, small businesses to get seen by the, the big media, popular media, or local media. Uh, so you help them, you know, reach their goal of being seen by more people and you know attract uh, attract new visitors to their to their store. And you told me about this eight steps formula that you created, which I, I thought it was very interesting and really worthwhile sharing. So I'd, I'd like you to you know start with uh, um, telling people like what is this about and uh, what are the benefits that Amazon sellers or e-commerce entrepreneurs can get if they follow your formula step by step. Sure. So um, basically, uh, I run e-releases, which is a press release distribution platform. And what I've seen doing 12 to 14,000 press releases a year are those types of press releases that get media pickup often. Um, I would say 95% of what uh, people send out as a press release isn't newsworthy and isn't strategic. Therefore, it rarely yields media pickup. Um, so uh, I, I've gone through and analyzed what are the, the types of press releases that do get meaningful pickup and can work for almost anybody. And that would include Amazon sellers, uh, as well as other types of uh, small business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, just just to give you a, a, you know, if you're looking for a video uh, to accompany uh, this, I, I do have a free masterclass um, that basically goes through these strategies um, in less than an hour that's available at ereleases.com forward slash plan, P-L-A-N. And uh, uh, it's a really a great place for people to get started if they're considering press releases or PR, because getting media pickup can be really meaningful for a company. It can leverage a lot of attention, uh, potential customers, um, as well as, uh, you know, people that you might have in your pipeline to get them over the hump and consider doing business with you and buying your product on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So first of all, you know, the link that you mentioned is going to be available to you guys in the show notes or in the description of the YouTube video. So make sure you you check that out. Uh, you you will have actually access to the sli slides and videos and a lot of more, uh, a lot of different materials about this topic that we're going to cover today. So so make sure you, you download that. And uh, secondly, about what you mentioned, I mean, I totally agree because right now the uh, the uh, it's it's a hot topic uh, at least for Amazon to drive traff to drive external traffic because Amazon it's rewarding that so uh, the topic that we're discussing today it's like very actual and uh, uh, very very useful for people to learn because you know um, more and more people are trying to leverage external traffic you know bring uh, traffic from perhaps this in this case uh, uh, media uh, websites and uh, and drive it to uh, to their amazon listing to increase ranking and and boost sales so so let's start with uh, these eight steps what what the let us uh, walk us through these eight steps you know then we will sure. dive deeper into each Okay, so um, the first step is owning your own story. Um, what's your unique selling proposition? What is it that makes you different from all the other products on Amazon? What is it that you uh, have developed or created that's a little more unique? Sometimes it can be your brand, um, you know, your name, uh, 
uh, it could be what uh, you know modification or changes or uh, enhancements you've given a product, um, and it, it's just a matter of bringing that to their attention. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is a lot of people feel like they're too small um, to get media attention. But the reality is the media loves to be seen as curators. Um, they like to discover small little hidden gems and bring them to their audience. They don't like bringing to attention, you know, the large companies like Apple and Microsoft and places like that because they know they can advertise and everybody is pretty much aware of them. So um, if you're a small or new brand um, and, and you feel like you're doing something that's authentic and interesting, um, you know, press releases uh, can work really well for you by tapping that talking about your um your journey uh what inspired you to maybe perhaps create your product or to bring it to market um you know being vulnerable and showing who you really are as a brand and as a company and so uh you know uh, sharing your story can go a long ways because uh, the media is is story specific. Uh, they're journey specific. Uh, most articles are written uh, as, as a story format. So you wanna make sure that you do include uh, enough information that they can build a story and uh, sometimes being vulnerable and sharing little obstacles you've suffered along the way, uh, you know, makes you relatable, especially with business media. I've had uh, clients who shared embarrassing uh, business mishaps and they got picked up in ink magazine and they opened with the story of how they had to cancel thanksgiving dinner one year because of uh the the volume of orders that they received and had to fulfill them from their family garage so uh it was something that a lot of small businesses and entrepreneurs can relate to and you know that's that's the thing about owning your story is making yourself relatable and having a story that you can then convey to the media I uh, love it, love it. Actually, I think it's a great insight because uh, uh, you, you, we, we can actually, this could help people to uh, change their mindset about media because I, I think most people would think about that, would, would think that, in, you know, uh, big companies, you know, get shared in media. But as as you just mentioned, you know, the peop, uh, these writers and creators like to pick, you know, the the unknown stories and, and look like they're, their curators. So I think that's a great insight. So basically this is opening up, you know, the possibilities to anybody to be to be present in in this media outlet. So uh it, it's a it's a great first step to to you know change our mindset and uh, uh start start approaching these people. I'm I'm curious to to ask you like uh, who is uh, writing these press releases that we would present to the to the to these media outlets? Is it the the brand itself or the 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 writers uh, help help with that? So uh, e-releases has writers, um, but I honestly believe that most anyone can write a press release. They're not very sophisticated. Um, they're very plain, written in the third person. Um, so I, I would I would challenge anyone to give it a try themselves. They can always send it to our office and have us take a look at it and give them a, an honest assessment whether we think that's fine room for improvement or whether they would you know be advised to have a professional write it um but but that being said i think that uh it's not something you should be intimidated by because you know the writing of it is less important than the actual uh message that's being conveyed you know what the angle is what the hook is and uh i i you know i feel like a lot of attention should be placed on that and a little less so on the writing yeah, yeah, okay, it makes sense. And and obviously, you know, now with AI and ChatGPT, we can get like a, a the first draft, let's say, done in in a very simple way, and and then we can edit that. So so that's something you know we should not be intimidated about, like you mentioned. Okay, cool, cool. So uh, then uh, let let's move on. What's the second step? So the second step is researching your industry for blind spots or gaps. Um, often, if you uh, are tapped into your particular niche and industry, you know, what is it that is going on right now that people aren't really talking about? Maybe you and other sellers in this marketplace talk about it um, or 
you know, if you were to meet people within your industry, it would be like a hot button topic of like, have you noticed that, uh, you know, people are moving away from this type of plastic or they're looking for, um, you know, uh, kitchen products that solve this particular uh, need, whether, you know, whether it's the grip for people who are growing older or, uh, you know, people with special needs or things like that. And uh, by identifying a gap or a blind spot, it's something that you could potentially leverage. Or if you have a product that's already leveraging that, bringing it to the industry's attention um, that, hey, this is uh, a problem um, and here is our solution for it. And as a result, that makes you uh, really interesting to your industry because once you bring to light a blind spot or gap that they maybe haven't covered uh, extensively, uh, you, they will then do so and uh, your product will probably be a spotlight in that article. Okay, very interesting. Actually, something I, I just thought about uh, is that, you know, many times we are very knowledgeable about our own products, right? But uh, we that we give for granted many things about the product. But uh, a lot of the time, you know, the general public uh, don't know about certain things about those products. So I think there will be lots of very interesting things to talk about, about any products that we might give it for granted because we just know about, about it. It's just a normal thing about the industry or, or the, the niche we're involved in. But actually, there's there's a story behind that, those, those things so that uh, might not be as obvious as we think, right? So... I think that's a, that's a great angle to think uh, about what to present to writers. And, sure. and yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, let's move on then. Um, sure. What about step three? The step three is uh, qu quote me on it. Um, a lot of people, when they write a press release, don't think very much about the quote that they write. And it's usually something that you put in quotation marks and you attribute it to a person at the company. Um, a lot of times they just are written as an afterthought. They're very safe. They don't say anything meaningful. And it's a huge opportunity for you to stand out because if the journalist likes your story, they can build an article all around an amazing quote. So give uh, a, a little bit more time and energy to crafting a really concise, beautifully worded quote, something that if they were to paraphrase it, there would be a loss, a loss of language, a loss of impact. So, you know, it's a really a great way to make yourself stand out. I've seen lots of journalists who are considering two articles or press releases to turn into articles. And one has an amazing quote, and it gets picked because that really can sort of be uh, something that's really going to add some oomph and power to the actual article. Okay, yeah, that, that's a very interesting insight I never heard of before. I mean, when you just told me in our pre-interview chat, I think it's very smart because, uh, yeah, I can totally see writers being interested uh, into writing something just starting from a... a memorable quote so i think that's that's a very smart to smart way to to take it okay cool um uh, I, actually guys remember that you know in this uh in the material that you will be able to to download from the from our website the sellerprocess.com you know you'll find in the show notes the links to download this um this uh, all, all these materials and you will find inside some some examples of a mediocre quote and how can you turn that quote into like a, a better one that it's more memorable so make sure to check that out so then what's step uh four step Correct. four yes so uh step four is about being the friendly jerk also known as the contrarian um, if everybody in your industry is following a particular trend, but you haven't, and you have a reason for it, share what it is. For example, if everybody's moving to, uh, you know, a, a, a different uh, type of battery or a, a different type of, of, of use, and your product doesn't, why would people care about your product? What, what would be the benefit of it? And if there is a benefit, you know, put it front and center and own it. Uh, be the contrarian. For example, there's a lot of people that are feeling like uh, uh, electric appliances 
and uh, you know rechargeable uh, uh, lawn equipment and stuff like that is the natural progression. But perhaps you sell one that is uh, still a plug-in uh, that you run a, a cord. What are the benefits of that? Maybe it has more torque. Maybe it you know, and you could just honestly say that, for example, you know most rechargeable hedge trimmer trimmers can't handle uh you know branches more than say you know a quarter of an inch but using one that uh, is either gasoline powered or one that is uh plugged in uh you can handle larger uh branches maybe up to a half inch or something like that so you know what what is it that you are uh going against and how could you make that a benefit so many people feel like uh, when they get caught behind a trend that as a result, they they need to step up. But sometimes you can move inventory and uh, address a need that people may not be aware of and own that and be the contrarian. Um, I, 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 you know, do it friendly and in a way that's not going to make you seem like, uh, a, you know, a, a terrible person. But it, it is, you know, there are pros and cons and trade offs with everything. And so many people move so quickly from one thing to the next. And sometimes you're sitting on inventory that might be considered outdated or not modern, and you need to get rid of it. So, you know, being uh, there to uh, highlight what still makes yours superior or different in a meaningful way is a great way to to get out there and own that and every time the media potentially talks about this subject uh you have the likelihood that you might get plugged in because journalists like to cover both sides and if the industry is all moving in one direction there are very few people that are raising their hand and saying not so fast let me point out the downsides of this movement and how my product solves that by you know doing something a different way yeah yeah cool cool yeah i, I love that actually i i really uh, like the, the way you phrase it you know be the friendly jerk yeah that's that's really cool because uh, it really gives the you know the idea of uh, how you should be like in terms of you know sharing the, an, uh, an unpopular opinion right which is it's kind of a fascinating thing for for uh, reporters you know journalists or writers right so it makes your story more interesting yeah that's like that's a really great insight i i love it uh, so then uh, what's step five? Uh, step five is uh, stats and data. Uh, the media loves numbers. And if you read a lot of articles, they often will open or include meaningful statistics like, you know, two out of every three homeowners are finding this as an issue. And, you know, being the owner of interesting data can really get you uh, a lot of the media attention. Um, I I. Uh, coach some of my clients through creating their own uh, industry survey um, in which they do a survey on, you know, so, uh, that the industry that they're in. Uh, and um, it's, it's easy to get results if you don't have an audience, because I know that a lot of people who sell on Amazon don't have a list of their customers uh, easily of attainable or their leads. But what you can do is reach out to someone in your industry, a trade association, for example, uh, stay away from the large ones, but the smaller and independent trade associations don't get a lot of attention, uh, especially from the media. So if you approach them and ask them to send a survey link to their members, uh, and you will mention them in a press release that you said uh, say that you'll be issuing over the wire, uh, a lot of them see it as a win-win. Uh, they, they just include the link in an email or social media or both to their members. And in exchange for that, they get mentioned in the press release. Um, you, you know, then take the results from that survey um, I, I usually recommend a survey of 16 questions. I use SurveyMonkey. It's very easy. Four pages, four questions on each page. I usually put the most important questions up front. So if they leave after page one or page two, you still have those results from that uh, those, those questions. Um, if you do uh, have some oddball or left field questions, I usually put them on the last page. And surprisingly, if you don't have some weird or left field questions, I invite you to create some because... Uh, I have found that a third of the time, the questions that become the most interesting ones that you build a media campaign on were the ones that you thought were a little strange and the results were really interesting as a result. Uh, and you, you know, 
people when uh, posed with this, uh, how many people, uh, you know, do this one thing? Uh, a lot of people want to know the answer. So um, that, that can work extremely well for you. Um, usually after the survey, you want to analyze it, pick what you feel are the two to four most interesting responses that you got. Uh, you want to create some analysis of why you felt that it trended that way. For example, if, you know, surprisingly, you found out that most people in your industry don't want a particular um, uh, uh, feature that has become uh, really prominent lately, uh, that might be something that you want to lead with. Um, and uh, once you've developed those questions, you, you just build the press release around that. Uh, I do recommend that people uh, put a page up on a website where they have all of the responses from the questionnaire. And that way a journalist um, can go and review those and see if there might be more meaningful connections that they want to make based on what the responses were. And sometimes uh, two or three stories can be built off of a single press release, a uh, single survey. and. Uh, because you're the uh, author of the survey, you get mentioned, and every time the the, the survey is mentioned, um, you're 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 mentioned, and your brand is mentioned, and so that could really bring a lot of attention to you. Um, another thing, uh, when you do the survey, is on Survey Monkey. When they're finished with the survey, you can send them somewhere. So you could send them to your Amazon store after that. So everyone who completes the survey ends up at your store. And it's just a great way to get some uh, recognition, additional traffic and visibility. Yeah, wow, well, that's very interesting. Uh, I think it has a really smart idea to run your own survey. I'd love to kind of test it in with my own brand as well. So uh, how do you get the, the respondent? How how many respondents do you think it's it's uh, enough, you know, to make it a, a valuable uh, interview? I've uh, seen as little yeah. as 150, but I like to have over 200 responses and mm -hmm. partnering with the industry trade association often solves it. So if you sell, uh, you know, for example, kitchen products or, or something along those lines, um, you know, what audience uh, of, of people, what trade association would represent buyers of uh, kitchen appliances? So it might be chefs, uh, it could also be, uh, you know, cooking enthusiast or people who make recipe books. There's lots of trade associations. Find one, uh, ideally with around a thousand members or more, um, and and then reach out to them and ask for uh, if you mention them in the survey, um, uh, you know, would they send this to their members and have that link available for them and uh, maybe list along some of the questions that you ask. And I, I find that, you know, that works more than two thirds of the time. Um, so generally, you know, just going to uh, one small or independent trade association often yields results, if not move on to another one, because there are lots of different trade associations. There's tens of thousands of them. And it's just a matter of finding one that would be a good survey sample in your in your industry or who your customer base is. Okay, okay, that's very interesting. I didn't even wasn't aware that there were so many trade associations and, and they would be actually willing to help you with running these surveys. That's that's a great uh, things to know. Yeah, thank you for that tip. Yeah, sure. Awesome. So let's move on to the, the last we have the last three steps. So step six. What is that so, about? So that's about newsjacking. And that became really popular over a decade ago. And it's basically if something has happened that's in the news and it's really hot right now to do a press release on that subject. Um, many years ago, there was a big credit card breach at the, the retail store Target, for example. And so a lot of people would do press releases on the credit card breach. And these were mostly uh, consultancies in the security space. The problem with it is so many people know about this now that it really doesn't work the way it used to. But there is a way to do it that uh, in which you can stand out. So if there's something that's more generalized, like the target credit card breach, make it specific. If you if you cover a, a particular niche, uh, how can you make it very specific to that niche and then provide yourself as a resource? Uh, in the case of the credit card breach, I coached a client uh, who mostly worked with small mom and pop businesses that have credit card terminals 
on their counter uh, and said, hey, let's create an audit for these people to see if they're at risk of a credit card breach, uh, you, uh, you know, that like, like Target had. And we made it very applicable to small mom and pop merchants who have a credit card terminal sitting on their counter, what they should look for, what they should ask their merchant processor, what, what to be on the out, lookout for. And they got some media pickup as a result. I think if it was just a general security press release that just echoed what so many others said, they probably wouldn't have stood out. So again, you know, define a narrow uh, aspect of a trend and focus on that and make sure it's it's something that is specific to what y your products are. So if you're in a particular product space and uh, you know something big happens in your industry, like a major recall of lots of you know uh, hand mixers to use the kitchen example, uh, you know maybe uh, you could uh, talk about what people should look for in uh, you know. Uh, buying kitchen appliances, what what types of things, and you know, again, uh, you're, you're you want to put a really amazing quote together, attribute it to you, sharing what your brand name is, so that people who are like, wow, I really like what this person says, uh, can then you know find out more about your 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 store and the types of products that you sell. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, we, uh, thank you for it. We're sharing lots of uh, like very, very interesting, you know, strategies. Yeah, so I think uh, those are all valuable, like piggybacking on uh, trending news you know, in a creative way so that you can stand out, but kind of riding the trend of that uh, previous news. That That's a great insight and strategy. Cool. So I want to still cover the, the last two. So what's step seven? So step seven is uh, not to neglect your local media. Um, you know, you might be on Amazon and have a national presence, maybe even international presence, but uh, you are a local business. So in your local market, there's probably a newspaper. Maybe if you're lucky enough to have a business newspaper as well or a business magazine, um, perhaps there's local radio and TV um, that sometimes do segments uh, within the industry that you you know, represent. So if you are in, you know, doing lawn care products, uh, are there TV segments occasionally that talk about things to, uh, you know, get your mower in shape for the new season, things like that, um, that you could then put together tips and resources and uh, send it to them. Uh, you don't have to write a press release, just share tips to them. It could be as little as three or four sentences like, hey, I, I, uh, I, I, I see that we're heading into mowing season and I uh, represent an Amazon store that uh, specializes in lawn equipment. And I'd love to talk to you about what people should look for, what they should do to get their mowers in shape and, and uh, you know, what they should consider. Uh, the, the local media loves to spotlight local businesses and local uh, experts. So, uh, you know, do uh, a little bit of work. Uh, you can actually call the newspaper and ask what the email address is of a particular editor. Um, you know, having read the newspaper, you kind of probably have a feel for what one or two people cover your industry and then just ask for their email address. They don't try to hide it. They're members of the community. They want to be accessible to get news tips and, uh, you know, to, to not you know, to be told about meaningful things and just reach out to them on a regular basis. Um, I recommend at least quarterly um, to share something that uh, could be a story for you. Um, and sometimes I tell people to cover competitors, like maybe there's not an Amazon seller, but maybe there's an online seller that's in Chicago of in your same industry. Go to Google Alerts and put their name in a Google alert. And when you see them in the news, look at the article and say, huh, I would like an article, it's very similar approach and topic for me. So then you reach out to your local media. You don't tell them someone else wrote about this in another market, but just tell them I'm seeing a trend uh, where uh, some media are talking about this subject. And I feel that that would be really great for you. And my company would be a perfect example uh, to discuss this trend or this topic. And, uh, you know, if you have an amazing quote, go ahead and put an amazing quote, because as I told you before, journalists can build a whole article around a quote. So if you put uh, a little bit of analysis and thought into a meaningful quote, uh, a journalist can really go from, yeah, that seems like an interesting story to, wow, that seems like a great story. And that's a great quote that I can really build a really strong story around. 
Well, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great tip, and it's reminding me also, uh, you know, the story of uh, the author of Smart Cuts. So I don't know if you if you read that book. It's basically this guy who started with uh, uh, reaching out to local media, and he ended up, you know, publishing uh, uh, an article in in one of the biggest uh, uh, media outlets in his industry. And that's because you know of the the same reasoning of the the game bigger and better. You know, he's trading up. Uh, like a local uh, small like uh, small media article to to the next and the next uh, a big to to a bigger you know media outlet so just by telling them hey I, I've got already you know uh, uh, the art this article published in this small co- in in this local uh, media so do you want to you know take that article as well so he's basically trading up so I think it's uh, it's also a great way to start. Uh, by you know approaching local media so that you know we have kind of more leverage and uh, a better let's say PR CV let's say that we can we can show it to to bigger media outlets. Right. Cool. Cool. Okay. So we have the last uh, step. Step eight. What is that about? So step eight is sort of like look at me, and it's not ignoring the visual representation. Um, when a journalist is looking at two stories. And one is accompanied with uh, uh, an, uh, an infographic or a candid photo of the product in someone's home. And the other one has no collateral, no multimedia. You know, they're going to gravitate to the one that does have photos and, inf- and visual information. And the reason is a lot of these stories now are getting put uh, online and a lot of them have accompanying graphics. And a journalist knows and so does the the news outlet that if they have um, multimedia and visuals, a lot more people are going to see it. Uh, a lot more people are going to gravitate to it, and they're going to have a more positive experience because people are visually stimulated. So uh, the types of photos don't have to be like perfect sh- professional shots. They do not have to be, uh, you know, like stock photos. As a matter of fact, a lot of the media really responds well to candid photos, especially ones that show a product not on blue velvet and perfectly lit, but rather in someone's home or someone actively using it. So, you know, keep keep that in mind for your products. Uh, can you get some shots of them, um, you know, that are uh, them being used and uh, or, you know, looks like they're in someone's home as opposed to just uh, the types of shots that people generally use on Amazon, which are very professional and removed and spotlit and things like that. Uh, And also, you know, standing out and looking out uh, also is an opportunity for you to get out as an expert. Um, uh, There's always yearly predictions. There's always top 10 list. So if you sell uh, kitchen gadgets, for example, um, uh, you could have the top 10 kitchen gadgets and really put together a very curated list of things that are really great for mom. So you could have this as a pre-Mother's Day top 10 list. You could have it for Christmas, top 10 items for for mom's busy kitchen uh, before the holiday season. And uh, you don't have to make all of the products yours. As a matter of fact, you'll have more credibility if you go through that and you list seven products that aren't yours but maybe three of the products are, and you get yourself included. A lot of journalists, they're not lazy, but they're overworked. And if you put together a top 10 list that they can just easily copy and paste, a lot of them will do that. Uh, And uh, uh, as a result, people looking at these products, if your type of product uh, responds uh, or, or hits them, then they now know about you and can buy your product online. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I've seen this work for people who list top five items and theirs is only one of the five items and they list four other ones. Uh, and they and they talk about what the other ones do well and what they don't. And again, when theirs comes up, they talk about what theirs does well. And then they talk about maybe what it doesn't do as well, but maybe they pick something that's not really meaningful that most people would say, wow, this one has a really great pro, 
but not really. That's not a terrible con. I don't really care about that feature. So um, again, that's a way in which to make yours stand out and and make it easy for uh, especially local newspapers to just plug it in as a story. Uh, a lot of local newspapers nationwide look at press releases and they're looking for content. And if you've made it very easy for them to digest by just copy and pasting a list and getting it out there, uh, you know, filling a little space before Mother's Day with the top 10, uh, you know, best kitchen gadgets for mom. And yours is one or two or even three of those uh, 10 products. Um, you, you know, you stand a good chance that all 10 of those will be included as is and as written or pretty close to as written. Yeah. Okay. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Actually, I, I really loved each of these eight steps. I think we really covered lots of uh, very interesting strategies and things that will be really useful for people. And they could they could apply it even without the use of any agencies or or you know consultants or whatever. Uh, but uh, in this case, you know, I'm, uh, if you if they would like to really take it a step further, you know, maybe you know uh, outsource it to somebody else, right? Because it's also something that could take uh, a lot of their time, and uh, it will also it it, it has a, a its own learning curve. Um, they could reach out to you. Like, what, what, how can you help them? Tell people how can you help them in case they're interested, and uh, how can they reach out to you? Sure. So, um, our website again is ereleases.com. Um, we have a phone number, and uh, we have chat, and we have email. We have no salespeople. There's no commissions or quotas. We only have editors. And uh, we specialize in walking people through their first press release and getting them there or reviewing their first press release and letting them know what, what we think of it. Um, and, you know, we do that before you've even uh, paid us a dime when you're still deciding who to work with. Um, uh, we're, and like I had said, I'm, I'm really big in education, like the, uh, the these strategies and the video masterclass format that's completely free. And again, that was at ereleases.com forward slash plan. And um, all my social media is on the lower right of my website, and it's my direct LinkedIn. Um, that's a great way to, to reach me personally as well. Uh, but my staff is, is, is really available, and we really do specialize in helping people through the process. Uh, PR uh, should be a campaign of six to eight press releases. Uh, some of them are not going to work. Some of them will. And if you stick to these strategies, you'll find that more will work than not. Wow. Okay. Okay. Sounds sounds really great. Thank you again, Mickey, for for sharing all your insights. Yeah. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So hey guys, uh, well, um, remember the key to success is to emulate the best. So take home the all the insights that Mickey just shared with us, and uh, remember to download the um, uh, the uh, complimentary materials that you will get for free. At uh, you will find the link at thesellerprocess.com or in the link of the um, in the link below the the YouTube video in the description. Uh, so guys, remember uh, to take action on this and I wish you a productive week and I'll see you in the next episode. Hey, entrepreneurs, I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook, where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you. And leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.